there are reports there is actually evidence that the Russian government, and this, this is related to the green agenda. Now, remember, just to back up for one second, the green agenda that the Democrats have embraced is the idea that fossil fuels are bad, that natural gas and oil uh, are inherently immoral, that they are just destructive to our environment to the point that if we don't stop our reliance on fossil fuel, then as AOC or Greta Thunberg threatens, our world will... I don't know, come to some apocalyptic disaster in 10, 11, 12 years. A, a number, by the way, that doesn't change even as the number of years pass by. So that's that's a that's a, a joke for a different day to make fun of these these climate change criers. However, so th- this is the this is the the thrust of the climate change agenda, the anti-fossil fuel agenda. And the second part of it is saying, okay, well, the left wants us to get off of fossil fuels. And what do they want us to replace that energy? We need that energy. We consume that energy. It's necessary for everything from cars to air travel to the electricity in our homes to literally our entire society is dependent on fossil fuels. But they want us to turn to alternative sources of fuel or renewable energy. And they don't want us to use nuclear energy, which would be the intuitive, the intuitive alternative energy. They want us to use wind and solar. Now, wind and solar, of course, aren't actually green. They, wind and solar themselves rely on both coal and oil, both for the construction of the wind turbines that last 20 years max, sometimes a little bit more than that, and then have to be thrown out. And um, of course, to create the actual turbines themselves, you have to use coal to forge that steel. We know also that turbines are very environmentally unfriendly because they kill a ton of birds. You have to raise raise land, the environment, in order to build these wind farms. Um, Solar energy only works when the sun is out and likewise requires a ton of of land that has to be raised. Now, again, maybe that's a tiny bit tangential, but but to understand what this green agenda is, the thrust of the green agenda is to try to get the US and and Europe off of fossil fuels and to force them onto renewable energy, which is wind and solar. Now, there is evidence that the Russian government through shell companies, so the Russian government through shell companies has given millions and millions of dollars to green energy lobbying groups here in the United States and in Europe in order to reduce use of fossil fuels in the United States and Europe in order to then render us dependent on so-called green energy, which of course, as I said, requires fossil fuels, which would render us dependent on Russian oil. So Russian money, Russians aren't allowed to give money, by the way, directly. A foreign government or foreign entities aren't allowed to give money directly to lobby the United States government in this way. And so what they did is they created shell companies, you know, in in the islands, the Caribbean islands, as they always do, created shell companies. They gave this money to these shell companies that then funded green lobbying groups, groups here in the United States that were trying to ban fossil fuels, that were trying to turn us towards wind and solar, because turning us towards wind and solar doesn't mean that we're actually going off using oil. It just means that we buy oil from Russia. Russia wanted this to happen. Russia needed this to happen. This, this, was, this was the long game of Vladimir Putin. And the fact that we knew about this, that we knew about, when I say we knew about this, we knew that Russia was giving money to these green, these environmentalist groups in our country. We've known this for years. In fact, in 2014, the Secretary General of NATO, his name is Anders Rasmussen, he's also the former Premier of Denmark, by the way, he warned publicly that Russia was doing this exact thing, that they are actively working to undermine the U.S. and European fossil fuel industry, the production of fossil fuels in our country. This is what he said, quote, I have met allies who can report that Russia, as part of their sophisticated information and disinformation operations, engaged actively with so-called non-governmental organizations, environmental organizations, working against shale gas to maintain European dependence on imported Russian gas, end quote. Guess what the reaction was in the United States and around the world when Secretary General Rasmussen made this comment? NATO tried to brush their hands of him. They were like, oh, he, he, he only speaks for himself. He doesn't speak for NATO. The U.S. just brushed it right under the rug, swept it under the rug. No one paid attention to this. This was in 2014, eight years ago. We knew that this was happening. So fast forward just three years after that, 2017, two United States congressmen, Lamar Smith and Randy Weber, sent a letter to then Treasury Secretary Mnuchin with not only the exact same allegation, but evidence and a money trail. They named names showing exactly how this was done. 
And I want to read a little bit of this letter because, again, I when I read this, I thought, well, we've known about this for almost a decade. There's simply no excuse for Joe Biden not to have known this or taken action on this, for Europe not to have known this or taken action on this. And of course, the neglect to pay attention to what Russia was doing led us into this situation right now where Putin was in, empowered, where he is empowered to invade Ukraine, knowing that we're not going to divest from Russian oil because we can't, we rely on it. So this is what, this is what the two congressmen, Smith and Weber, wrote. They say the mechanics of Russia's scheme to use nonprofit entities to influence U.S. public policy and public opinion of the oil and gas industry. And they wrote, publicly available reports connect the dots in this complex scheme operated under the guise of phil uh, philanthropic endeavors. The Russian government and complicit parties have executed a political agenda with little or no paper trail. This scheme allows money originating from foreign countries like Russia to funnel through Bermuda-based shell companies to environmental groups in the United States with the aim of disrupting the U.S. energy treasury. These allegations are ripe for investigation by the Department of the Treasury. They write, according to reports, entities connected to the Russian government are using a shell company registered in Bermuda. The name of the shell company is Klein Limited, K-L-E-I-N Limited, to funnel tens of millions of dollars to a U.S.-based 501c3 private foundation, the Sea Change Foundation. This money appears to move in the form of anonymous donations. Sea Change then passes the money originating in Russia to various U.S. 501c3 organizations such as the Sierra Club, the League of Conservation Voters Education Fund, and others. These funds are dispersed as grants that will be used to execute a political agenda driven by Russian entities. The purpose of this circuitous exchange of foreign funds is to shield the source of the money. We've known about this. This is, this is something that was written about by members of the United States Congress in a public letter to Secretary of the Treasury Mnuchin years ago. The NATO Secretary of General, uh, Secretary General warned about this in 2014. Congress warned about this in 2017. And yeah, what did we do? We completely ignored this. In fact, it's almost worse than this because right now under Joe Biden, the United States is importing 595,000 barrels of oil every single day from Russia. That's a lot of oil. We don't need to be. We don't need to be importing this amount of oil. We have oil here in the United States, but Biden has refused to drill. He's ended federal leases for drilling. He does not want to buck these green energy groups. This lobby, this lobby that we now know is actually funded by the Russians. So these aren't even U.S. citizens who are environmentalists who are against fossil fuel, which is a stupid enough policy as it is. It's, a, it's an asinine policy to begin with, but it's not even U.S. citizens funding this lobbying of their own government officials. This is Russians, the Russian government, Putin, sending money through Bermuda to a so-called nonprofit here in the United States called Sea Change, who then disperses the money to environmentalist groups that lobby the U.S. government. I mean, this is like shady, shady, shady. And of course, we know the more reliant that Europe or the United States is on Russia, the less likely that Europe or the United States will be to call out Putin when he does something wrong, to be harsh against Russia if Russia acts aggressively. And Germany, of course, is the perfect example of that. They are actively saying out loud that they're not going to divest from Russian oil, that they rely on Russian oil. It was like we had to give them a kick in the pants just to get on board with the swift banking sanctions. Putin knows that he can deprive his critics of energy that they need to, well, live because he has rendered them dependent. This is the long game of Vladimir Putin.